that brings us to another very important thing that I want to talk about here, namely how to reevaluate grandiosity, because grandiosity has been negatively associated to narcissism. Grandiosity has also been used in a very blaming and derogative, negative way. But it's very important to uh, understand that grandiosity is an energy, a direction uh, that should not just be di dismissed, but uh, actually be e explored as a potential. And I'm going to give you a few examples. Somebody starts high uh, uh, college and has to envision themselves graduating. And that ambition is grandiose because it's not where you are when you start, but it is what you strive for. And then we have a problem with somebody starting college and believing that they will not graduate. Then we have a problem with narcissism, namely not being able to uh, 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 integrate and envision that. Uh, grandiosity. So, so another, I mean, grandiosity has a total function. Yes, because you exactly. cannot, and in fact, like you would, you could argue that a lot of adolescence and early adulthood requires grandiosity. Exactly. The other thing is then with some more extreme cases, somebody sitting and playing video games, uh, and uh, believe that they have the potentials for uh, going to Hollywood and do fi film uh, star career. And that, as uh, therapists, I have gradually realized it's very important not to throw that away, but say, okay, but why, why do you think you shall start? Or what, what prevents you? Because the, 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 this is a life and vision, uh, whether it's Hollywood or whether it's uh, starting <laughs> work at a bookstore in Cambridge or whatever, uh, that's not the issue. The issue is how does the person deal with any type of aspirations uh, or changes that can move life forward. Whether that then has uh, to do with Hollywood or, or, uh, or just get, get a job. I had a, a very eye-opening experience with somebody who said, well, I ha have a cousin who works in Hollywood that told me to, to, to come, but I, I, I'm so, I'm so scared of leaving uh, my family and uh, moving across the country. And there you have a completely different um, uh, internal uh, meaningful uh, struggle to, to address in, in, in psychotherapy. I think it's, it's very, very important uh, to see the um, important uh, aspects of aspiration and, and motivation in grandiosity. If you're not in the basement, but are, let's say you're writing and your aspiration is to finish a book. Yeah. That's a very different grandi, grand, that may not even be grandiose, versus not writing. Yes, exactly. And your aspiration yeah. is Absolutely. to write a book. Yeah. Those are two different mm. things. But it's easy then to say that I mean, you will not finish your bo book, yeah. rather than exploring what, what is the, the prevents you from right. uh, finishing your bo book. And I think that is a very, very important uh, uh, thing to keep in mind in, in treatment with people with um, narcissistic pathology. What you're talking about is avoidance. Avoidance, but, yes. Um, there, there but, can be, but the uh, act of not avoiding <clears throat> is going to expose you <clears throat> to the very thing you might be avoiding, which is why you're not engaging in the <clears throat> act. No, it, avoiding um, avoidance is a, a very, very uh, powerful component of uh, narcissistic pathology. I mean, if I build on the, the, this thing with writing a book, here you have another very specific narcissistic dilemma, namely somebody writes the book to the last chapter and then gets stuck. Mm -hmm. Because then it's a matter of uh, f finishing it, mm -hmm. getting it published, making it public, getting known, facing other people's feedback, facing the ratings in different uh, uh, magazines and, and newspapers, etc., uh, etc. Et and that is the big, big thing, namely avoidance of exposing, competing, 
getting evaluated, being known. Ah. And that is, is another uh, type of, of um, uh, narcissistic uh, pathology. Or, or, uh, a narcissistic pathology can create a, a stop in, in life. What happens to someone if they do get really exposed or if they're in treatment with you? Mm, sure. By the time that is happening, yeah. are they prepared for yes. the experience? A very that... good question. Because here is uh, the complexity of uh, uh, narcissistic uh, pathology and personality functioning. That although a, a aspiration can be highly, highly desirable, it can also be very, very challenging mm -hmm. to reach it. Uh, Sigmund Freud introduced this thing with being wrecked by success. Mm. Suddenly, uh, a whole new aspect of ownership of competence and um, uh, uh, recognition can be very, very hard to deal with for various reasons. For instance, one patient who was about to graduate from college, suddenly stopped because um, they felt that if I graduate, my mother will not talk to me again because she couldn't graduate. So there was an ambition of a punishment and a, a, a challenge of not being able to fully in a healthy narcissistic way, stand up for own sense of agency, competence, direction, goals, and motivation. Right. And that differs from, from another patient who also came from, from a background without a, 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 a higher education, uh, but um, where the parents highly admired uh, uh, their child for advancing in the, uh, the academic field and getting their, their masters and pursuing their, their PhD and came to all the graduations. So there you had the, the, this, the support that the um, person still struggled with the um, uh, insecurity of the, the social uh, uh, economic uh, journal uh, that education uh, led to. But it was um, very different. I see. Right. It was m more collaborative and supportive right. within the family. These are these aspects of uh, uh, life-related narcissistic challenges that are so important to reach in treatment with, with the, these patients and encourage them to formulate their own narratives of their experiences. And this can be deeply rooted or hidden behind the arrogant, uh, sort of typical uh, provocative facade, or I don't want to be here, and so on and so forth. And, uh, but that's where, where the important thing is for listening, exploring, the, uh, curiosity, encouraging, uh, reflective ability and um, curiosity in the patient. Just by virtue of the conversation we've just had, I see, I think, what you're doing by listening and trying to find the areas of resistance mm -hmm. and then prodding reflection or looking for reflection. Yeah, the, it is the, the thing of finding the patient's own verge for it yeah. and, and getting to the core of their own experiences. Uh, and, and that's why it is so important to not proposing hasty mm -hmm. uh, explanations, but actually wait and see right. uh, uh, when the patient is ready. Well, there was one other thought that came to my mind, which is um, one of the people I know who treats personality disorder people had said that he spent many years treating people in prison populations, a homeless people. And he said, you'd be surprised the amount of NPD in those populations. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's going on with people in that population? Just to disrupt our expectations of they have to look and be in a certain way. Yes, because uh, 
change and moving towards uh, uh, aspirations and, and, and visions uh, can be very challenging and, and even frightening. And there can be a sense of, um, associated with the sense of control to be uh, homeless because you know uh, what you have. Um, and um, it can be associated to entitlement and you know what you, you, you can ask for, what you should get and so on and so forth. While a uh, life uh, based on own uh, competence and uh, aspirations and a sense of agency can, can be uh, frightening.